KDB is fire. Buy some Barney, where you at? Yeah. Yeah. We here to toss some trap. Yeah. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. What you doing? Ah. We about to talk. Cowboys draft. What you want? Ah. Ah. Yeah, this be slap. Clack, 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 clack. This be go. Draft, boy, the draft go. Fast on board, it blah blah blah, it go. Blah 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 blah. Blip. Da. What we tap to hit the button. Uh, uh. What you hit, what you don't. Uh, uh. Yeah. I'm up to something. Uh, uh. We bout to, we we'll hit the button. B B B Planet. be nightmare says Vosh when the album coming it's crazy because when the album come I'm a rap for real <laughs> I'm a rap for real <laughs> you hear me you hear me life good y'all I can't complain can't complain we got some things in the works got an announcement to make in a couple days all that good stuff but you'll hear it when you hear it don't worry about it. Until then, we gonna be chilling. Till then, we gonna keep putting in this work. Just let me just. Hold on, let me let me let me turn the music up till I find my glasses. Hold on, let me just. What 
what up, 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 what up. <clears throat> Got some things I wanted to run by y'all today. A little bit of cowboy talk, a little bit of draft talk, putting them together, all that good shit. Um, this, 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 this is what I need from y'all, right? This is what I need from y'all. I need a list of soliloquies that y'all might want to get into. Like if there's a topic that y'all, you know, may want Vash to get into, like if y'all really want a soliloquy, let you know, because we're about to, um, we're about to turn soliloquies back up. We're going to turn them up fast. We're going to turn them shits up fast. You know what I mean? We're going to get right back into them. Um, at a high level of production at a faster rate so things about to change things about to change um i know i told y'all that we were going to um that we were going to be getting more content weekly well at first i lied i lied i said we was going to be doing like five pieces of content a week i lied i'm not lying no more We got some things in the works, man. We got some things in the works, you know what I mean? So, hang tight. I'll explain later at a more opportune time. Not today, though. Not today, though. But I will explain at an opportune time. Nah, my, uh, that's a good soliloquy topic. I like that. Um, So, what we're going to do today, just a handful of things I want to do today. Um, I was just thinking about topics to... To bring to y'all i want to ask you guys what would really make your day if dallas got this pick also what would ruin your day if dallas got the, if, if dallas got this pick i would love to hear from you i would love to hear from you i would love for you guys to you know come in and give a little bit of your thoughts on that i got the phone lines open all day 202-926-1127 this is one of them kind of shows where i really want to hear from you i really want to hear um you know what'll make you happy and what'll make you sad first round in particular you know what i mean like and, and look if you want to if you want them nuanced draft fans you know you know what i'm saying one of them nuanced characters that'll be like yo vach if we got this player in the fourth round i'd be sick hey do your thing do your thing if you want to be one of them nuanced draft characters, you know what I mean? But specifically, we're talking about 24. That's really what I want to get into, you know what I mean? What would happen at 24 that'll upset you? I'm going to give you my list. I'm just simply giving you the setup, and I'm passing out the number for you guys to call in and do what you want. Simply that. Simply that. Also, um... I know I, I I keep I keep doing this. I keep saying this. I, I I think I'm serious now. I think I'm serious because of the new thing that we're gonna announce in due time is gonna give me an opportunity to have more time. You understand? So Vice's Voice Podcast is on the way. I promise we're gonna get it right. So y'all go follow Vice Voice Podcast. We're gonna drop something real soon. I promise. Also, okay. Also, and we're doing this after after today's stream. After today's stream. We're going to be streaming Elden Ring on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Vach Lombardi. So go over there. And, and the only reason why the, the Twitch hasn't become a real thing, the only reason why the podcast hasn't become a real thing is because I simply don't have a lot of time. But there's going to be this new thing that's happening Tuesday. It's really happening now. It's happening Tuesday that's going to give you guys more content and me more free time in which me having more free time just ends up with y'all having more content so let's just clap it all up just clap it up, clap it up. so vach's voice can be found on all um platforms we're definitely going to get into that please come in and support that uh you know it's a valuable part of 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 vach content you know what i mean and then um, check us check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Vach Lombardi. You can just go to Twitch and type in Vach Lombardi. Um, there's some leftover film over there, some leftover all 22 film over there. So if y'all want to run over there and check that out, you can. It's there for you if you like. But the Twitch will no longer be for um the Twitch will no longer be for uh all 22. It'll be for, you know, 
whether it be just regular content, we sitting up chilling, we're reacting to something. Vash may have a think piece, Vash may have a talk. The Vash's Voice podcast may be recorded there. Um, and we're gonna do a lot of gaming over there. So uh, everything non-football will ex- it will exist over on the Twitch, twitch.tv slash Vash Lombard. You see what I'm saying? And um, everything that's football related, whether it be draft and content, uh, it'll it'll exist on this page and it'll also exist. You feel me? So, um, and I guess I just let that slip or whatever. I guess I I just said what the new thing is gonna be. So look, we're gonna be streaming, or we're just we're we're just gonna be doing work. We're gonna be doing content in two places, man. We're gonna do uh, the content over here at the Vash Lombardi channel. We're gonna- And all the Vash Lombardi stuff will, will, you know, you can always find content on the Vash Lombardi channel. You see what I'm saying? But we're also going to be. All right, cool. Um, so with that out the way, right, um, what I really wanted to. HMNI says you got mutant. You got muted suddenly out of nowhere. God, that's fucked up. Um, what I said was content is going to live on the Vash Lombardi channel, but then we're also going to. So that's that, you feel me? So this is what I want from y'all today, right? Um, in the chat box, if y'all think of any soliloquy topics, because we're gonna need plenty of those, if you um, have any soliloquy topics, you can put them in the chat box. I'm gonna read them and I'll write them down to prepare to, you know what I'm saying, do them or whatever, because the soliloquy topics will exist. On- but uh, but today, what I want to hear from y'all is I kind of want to hear Cowboys draft at 24th overall, right? What would really upset the shit out of you if this happened? And what would, like, make you happy? Like, like you know, it, it ain't got to be like, um, it ain't got to be like your dream scenario. Because everybody's dream scenario, you know, would be fucking Aiden Hudson or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? The fucking dream scenario would be Stanley. You know what I mean? But just, let's just kind of talk through this as a family. You feel me? Let's talk. Let's uh, talk through this as a family. <laughs> as a family. Uh, so with that being said, I got somebody on the phone right now. I got two people on the phone right this second. Um, let's just kind of get into it and see what the hell they talking about. And then you know, if y'all need me to come in and talk, we'll come in and talk. And I'm gonna go to the chat box. And as y'all have questions, we're going to you know incorporate y'all incorporate y'all's questions as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> we them boys uh draw five in the super says jameson williams or zion johnson i actually got a comment on this let me turn my music back up carlos hang tight um so me and a couple of people right we've been talking also free short dog till short dog free um about this whole zion johnson thing right i like zion johnson you know i like him as a player I like him as a player, but what I think is going to be available for you at the 24th overall pick, I don't think we're going to be looking at Zion Johnson as one of those guys, you know? So we them boys, it's, it's a, this is a perfect example. He, dro- he dropped five in the Super Chat. Appreciate you, sir. He said Jameson Williams or Zion Johnson. I don't even think that's close. I don't even think that's close for real, you know? In my opinion, you, you, you know? You know? And, um... I don't want us to, to to get so caught up in guard or get so tunnel vision in guard or get so caught up in, you know, cowboy B writers and content creators saying Zion Johnson that we just automatically go, oh, 24, let's go see what just let's, let's see what Zion Johnson is doing. Cause I think that better players exist, like Kenyon Green. Right. And then I also think they're they're gonna be better players from many positions. I think they're gonna be better linebackers there. They're gonna be better, you know, corners there, better offensive linemen there. Definitely better wide receivers there. Like Jameson Williams is probably one of the dudes that's that's gonna be there, but uh, but hey, you Olavi might be there. You know what I'm saying? Like like we you know, we never know. I like Zion Johnson, but if I had to rank him on my big board, in which my big board is coming, stay tuned. If I had to, you know, rank them on my big board somewhere, Zion Johnson would be like my f- fourth interior player. You know what I mean? He'll be like my fourth interior player and like ranked on my big board or something. He'll be like 30s or 40s maybe. Possibly. 
And then you add it to the idea that when quarterbacks get drafted, a spot gets pushed down. I just think so many better better people will be there than Zion Johnson. So. So with that being said, let me just answer the question. Since Alex don't like when I just go straight to the phone, let me let me just answer that question, right? If we were to take Zion Johnson at twenty four, I'd be a little off put. Just a just a wee bit off put. If we were to take Bernard Raymond at twenty four, it'll be a it'll it'll be a wee bit off putting. Just a, a, I'd be a little bewildered. Just a little, just a little bewildered. If we took Devin Lloyd at twenty-four, I'd be a little. Ah, ah, you know, especially with the with the notion that you know, and I'm not saying these guys are here, but just think about some of the guys that we see mocked to Dallas. I'm not even gonna say the DS word because we get DS on this team or JD on this team. I'm getting this chair pregnant. If we get them, if we get DS on this team, and I don't want to say nothing because of the karma in the universe, but if we get DS, and Chad, y'all can talk about it. If we get DS or JD on this team, the chair is getting pregnant on the string. String. So that's how I feel. So when we talk about, you know, potential players that could be there for the Cowboys, right? What'll make Vach happy? Kobe Dean will make Vach real happy. I might still hump the chair, but it won't get pregnant, you know? Because um, I love Nicole Dean. Uh, if it was like Tyler Linderbaum, right? I'll probably do a little dance in the chair, but I wouldn't hump the chair. If it's like Kenyon Green, I'm going to slide the chair back, stand up, and give a smattering of an applause. If it's Kenyon Green, because I love Kenyon Green. But if it's DS or JD is getting pregnant. You feel me? I don't even want to assume them players is there. If DS or 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 JD is there, I don't even want to pretend like they can make it to 24. Cause if they do, I am the father. I will hire one of Maury's cameramen to chase me around the house and out the building because I am the father. Shitting me? I'm going to jail. And I guess all of this falls in line with the title of the video. Hold on, time out. Short dog on the phone. He ain't got much time. Wait a minute. <laughs> Alex, you had to chill out. Short dog, what up, man? What up, what up, boss? What's up, my guy? You good, my guy? Hey, bro. I just, uh, you know how, how how you made me feel, bro, and you're shouting me out? Because, look, I was, in, I was down there in the borderlands, bro. I'm from New Mexico. I came down to Texas, got into a little situation, bro. They found me with some money. My friend left running. I didn't know where he was at. I mean, the cops wanted me to go, and I don't know what they wanted me to do. Of course, you know, I don't say nothing, so I was down for a, close to three weeks, bro. There was Mari Cooper, all that stuff happening. I was, And we had one cell phone, and I was running it, so, I mean, I was waiting for your stuff. People were mad already. I had that run back at you. As a matter of fact, bro, it was funny because... They're all, who the hell is Lombardi? I told them, dog, that's the guy that's that's preaching in here. Because there's about two Cowboy fans in there. Yeah. You know, the rest of them football fans and stuff, dog. But, you know, I'd put it down, bro. But I had money, bro. I mean, the second I got in there, my attorney filled me up. I had books on my, my, my books were all the way filled. I had everybody on my cell popping, the pot popping. And we live in a great country, bro. You know, I knew I was I would get out. My attorney came out there, got me out, bro. I'm on I'm off papers. I got to go see my probation officer tomorrow but hey it's all good vibes the love is there dog and we got it on lock bro you know as far as as far as what you're talking about though hey Kenyon green gets there that's mm. my guy bro I, I mean i want him or tyler linderbaum if not 
No, Kobe Dean, right. of course, Stingley. Those are the two guys. But you can't say it better than, bro, you're the voice. That's why I tell you, fuck little Dirk, bro. You're the guy holding it down, bro. You're the voice. When I hear you, it's like I can't even say it better myself. Watch nothing but love. Everybody that's saying free short dog, bro, go check me out. Watch. Hey, I'm going to hit you, bro, so you can see for real. Because I have a couple things. I mean, I've been on MTV Vice on right. some shit right. here. And there I have a couple little, you know, um, documentary things on me. Right. And my real name and shit. That way you can know who I am officially. Lee, bro. Right. You know, I'm a gangster. I'm a good man, bro. I'm an American. I love the Cowboys. I love God. I fear, I'm afraid of Jesus. Right. Other than that, bro, you know, peace in Ukraine. I got love for everything else, Vacha, and I'm with the shits, bro. You got to feel me on that one, dog. I, I'm with it, bro. So, at the end of the day, Vacha, I love you. I want to see you soon. Maybe rap with you, bro, but I'll to check me out, guy. Hey man, send it to my uh, send it to my um Facebook DMs. Facebook? I know you add me on the Facebook, so send it to the DMs and we gonna share it with the world. We gonna hold you down one time for short dog being in the free. You feel me? In the free. You feel me? In the free world. In the free world. Go ahead. Uh, nah, but that's it, bro. I mean, it, it, you got to understand, you're a big piece of it, dog. When the Cowboys went down and they got rid of Collins and they got rid of Cooper, I was feeling down and out, bro. I ain't going to lie to you, but, you know, it's it's always what I love. And hearing your community, dog, is like hearing all the different people from different points of view. You know, the landlord, you know, my boy Vaughn, Uncle Charlie, the goat. Like, there's just a lot of people that, like, I miss, bro. You know, so, like, when I was in there, dog, I was like, you know, this is my guys, bro. Like, these guys, I, when I can't hear them, it's like I don't have no, my, I don't understand. I can't see clear, dog. Right. So I got to put my glasses on with Vosh, and I got to see clear. Right. But anything you with, dog, I'm with it, bro, for real. And I'm going to take care of you, Vosh. I appreciate you, bro. I knew you were my guy. Right. I've always said it, always done it day one, bro. But for real, after this, you holding me down in jail, dog, you're a brother. You got, I mean, you've always been certified, bro. But I got extra love for you, bro. Right. I appreciate you for holding me down on my, right. on my lowest. But, you know, I get back to the top real quick. Watch, we're eating champagne. We're drinking. We're, we're eating tacos, tostadas. We got shrimp on there. We got filet mignon. I mean, we're doing the damn thing, dog. So I love you, Watch, and thanks to everybody else for shouting me out. And I'll get with you to Watch so that people can know who I am and they can see that I'm certified in this shit. I ain't the baddest man. Right. I ain't, I ain't uh, you know what I'm saying, but I'm a good man, never never been, I never told on nobody, I never hit nobody, I never stole from nobody, I've hit a lot of people, but other men, not girls, and kids, I love them, but I hit a lot of men, I did a couple things, I've been in jail, I got my deal, but I still got respect, bro, and I love you, and the way you rock with it, dog, and I'm down to do some other shit for you, and anybody stuff crazy. Right. Short dog, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you, dog. Short dog says he's a family man. He's God-fearing. That reminds me of a line from the philosopher Styles P. He says, it ain't hard to bust your gun. Go home and hug your kids. What an inspiration that guy is, but what a guy. I be telling y'all, man, short dog ain't bullshit. No, no, short dog, don't be fucking around. Short dog ain't Alex hated that we had to go to the phone right there, but what you, hey, what you want us to do? The short dog, man, what you want us to What you want us to say? What you mean, you know? Yo, somebody in the chat box said, who is it? Uh, Dylan Dylan? Somebody in the chat box said, I forgot. I can't see it, but but look, they was like, they were like, Short Dog was more mad we lost Cooper than the fact that he was in jail. And I said, hey, man, don't make me laugh about Short Dog. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, man. Let's get Carlos on the phone, dog. See what Carlos talking about. Los, what up? Yo, what up, Fox? Cool, my guy. What you got for the show? Man, real quick, man. I just want to talk. I just want to talk to Jeff with you because you the you in jail. You the draft you, you in jail. You in jail right now? Nah, man. Okay, man, okay, man. Okay, I, okay, okay, okay. I, I ain't like short dog, bro. Okay, my bad. Okay, hey, my but bad. but hey, I'll tell you what though. My bad. I hope short dog encounters a Philly fan in the stands because I don't think a Philly fan wants to encounter him. You I know, don't. He, he cowboy right and die. You know. I don't want short <laughs> dog to do nothing that's gonna put him back inside, man. So we just gonna <laughs> we just gonna let him slide. But go ahead though, Los. What you got, bro? Nah, okay. Okay, for sure, for so sure. Yeah, 
<laughs> but players that fall to the 24 that are insane to me, if they fall, are just three names and, like, a little bonus, which is Thingley, Kyle Hamilton, and Jordan Davis. And my little bonus in there is Tyler Linderbaum because he's been mocked to either fall or go up. You know, it's, it's a hit or miss. But if we get those names that to fall for us, those are plug-in and, you know, play players, you know. And sure. even, my dream scenario is if you put Stingley with Diggs and that Michael mentality, <laughs> good luck, you know. And my safe picks are Kenyon Green, Zion Johnson, and Traylon Burke. So, so how come your okay? So your safe picks are your realistic picks, is what you're saying, and then the other picks yeah. are the are the picks that you got your fingers crossed for that you're doing a little voodoo, hoping that you get though. Correct? That what you're saying? Exactly. Not wrong with that. I, I I don't know how much how much how much drugs like look, man. DS, bro. I don't know what he got to do to get to to get to 24. I think. I think JD can make it to 24. I think there's a series of unfortunate events that can cause for JD to get to 24. I don't want to say their name because I don't want to mess up the floor of the universe. I I definitely think J, JD can make it. He probably won't though. But what? How much coke DS got to get caught with at the border for him to fall to 24? But if he do, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna be right in there with short dog, and I am the father. 100. percent and I kind of like Traylon Burks too, but go ahead, sir. I'm listening to what you're saying. I don't think um, I don't think Kyle Hamilton makes it to 24, but I do think Kyle Hamilton will be in the teens somewhere because I've seen safeties that I like better than him, and safety just typically doesn't go to have. You know, the Jets made a mistake with Jamal Adams and all that, uh, but typically safety normally falls. So I do think I do expect Kyle Hamilton to fall unless another team makes a mistake. But go ahead. Gotcha. And I knew with these two things like. So with the thing I would hate the most in the draft is I would absolutely hate if Will Mc, not Will McClay, but Stephen Jones or Jerry wants to reach for a second round or third round talent, and we skip all over the first round talent and the names we listed. Why in tarnation? Why why in tarnation? Why in tarnation would you say something like that? You saying like if we had first round grades on the board, but we drafted a second round grade just because? Exactly. I would so absolutely go insane. Watch. I would. You don't. I don't even know. I might go to jail. <laughs> That'd be sick, bro. But yeah. But. That'd be sick. Bro. And then the yeah. soliloquy I want you to get into is okay, go ahead. Yeah. on the on the season is I want you to attack how we did the first half of the season versus the second half of the season and to see exactly how who or what we can do to add to our system quote-unquote, because we do our diligence to find players, you know, with Stephen Jones. For sure. And that's it. Hey, man, appreciate yeah, no. it. Appreciate it, Los. Good call, man. No, no problem, man. Yes, sir. And you're the voice of the draft. Peace. Man, thank you, man. Thank you, man. Hey, everybody, too, since we got 252 people here, um, be sure you're around Tuesday. Make sure y'all ain't doing nothing around Tuesday in the afternoon. Around 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Make sure y'all ain't doing nothing. I might need y'all to be around to enact some change for me. I need, you know, I need y'all to, to hold me down on this. So just hang Tuesday. We got some shit to talk about on Tuesday. If you at work, go to the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? If you in school, drop out. I didn't think that they had the internet in jail, but fuck, according to Short Dog, if you in jail, just like, I don't know, just hide, just hide behind a mattress or something and just, I don't know, just, 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 just tune in. I don't know, just, just, just tune in. Um, what time Tuesday? Just look for me around two or three. Look for me around, around two or three. And if you can't make it to the live, I will leave a set of instructions at the beginning of the stream. And after that, you'll know what to do. That's a lie. I'll leave a set of instructions. No, that's not a lie. I'll leave a set of instructions at the front and at the end of the stream. Central time, yes. Two to three central time. Just kind of tap in with me. We got a little mission. Got some things we want to do here. But that's only if you love me, man. That's only if you it, it, I don't I don't need no money from y'all. If you want to it. I don't need no money from y'all. You know what I mean? I don't need nothing from I just I just I just got this mission. All you gotta do is click a link. Got a 
a little, got a little something to do here. Got a little something to do. AJ's Way Drive 5 and Super Chat says, Stingley or Green at 24? Stingley. And I love Kenya Green. But um, Stingley. And uh, London or Olave at 24? I actually got my wide receiver rankings somewhere. Give me a second. I got my uh, my wide receiver rankings. I, I just – I'm not going to – I'm just not going to release them on here because I got to. When that gets set up, I'm going to release my rankings during that time. You see what I'm saying? But, you know. <clears throat> um, I I have it written down somewhere. Give me a second, bro. Give me a second. Uh, let me let me let me check the email that I sent. Because they have my rankings and they got to, you know, do some little shit with them. So um, give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. I got a. Uh... But yeah, I'll uh who 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 was that? Uh AJ's way. I'll definitely let you know uh <laughs> which wide receiver. Uh which wide receiver I got ranked. Let's see. Oh, My guy Will Steel. Shouts out to you, sir. Um me. Also too, after after the stream today, like after this stream, like the stream's gonna end like 30 minutes after that. We're gonna be on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Vice Lombardi. We're gonna be over there chilling. We're gonna be over there reacting to anything you may want me to react to. And we're gonna be playing Elden Ring. So um let me know. Uh let's get into Did I say what would make me upset if we drafted at 24? Have I had a conversation with y'all? Let me restart my my uh talking music and just let y'all know what'll upset the shit out of me. What'll uh what'll upset me if the Cowboys take at twenty four on the there we go on the draft day. <clears throat> Let me. So I'm trying to find these rankings for y'all, man. I don't want to leave y'all hanging. I don't want to leave my people hanging because I love y'all to pieces. Here we go. Ranks. I had to send them to what's you know what's the name. Uh, Drake London is my is my uh is my wide receiver three. Olave is my wide receiver four. Pickens is my wire suit five. That's all you get. That's all you get. Tamara was all like, uh, <laughs> they get all five. You're going to get the chair pregnant five times. Perfect. Yes. Um, Boy, Bernard Raymond at, at, at 24 would just really grind my gears, bro. It'll really scuff my Tims, man. It'll really just upset the shot of me, bro. You know, Bernard Raymond is a is a solid player, but I just think at that point in the draft, you're going to have better players on the board than him. I think um, I think you have the opportunity at 24 to draft offensive lineman that's not going to require a lot of uh, refinement. You know, I think you could take a player that's going to be ready day one for you at 24. Assuming that we draft the right character. Bernard Raymond is going to take a little bit of work. A lot of bit of work. He's a fat tight end. You know, there was even a game I was watching. I forgot which game it was. But, you know, they they uh, they have a right tackle. Luke Go Go to keep Garoke. He's being projected as a guard, but he played right tackle or whatever. I'm like, man, I'm kind of like Luke a little more than Bernard like Luke a little more to Bernard you know and I think everybody was kind of evaluating him and look look Danny this is the problem right Danny Savage in the chat box this is the problem right you say Raymond needs about 20 pounds of peanut butter this is the problem the motherfucker was already 200 pounds as, as a time he's already put on 110 pounds to play offensive line how much more fucking peanut butter he need <laughs> Shit. How much goddamn peanut butter you want that boy to have, man? <laughs> in case in, in case anybody didn't know, Bernard Raymond once played tight end. And I think um I think everybody was kind of on that train because oh, well he's super raw and look at what he can do. Maybe he'll even test well like a tight end, but he didn't. Maybe he'll test well like a tight end, but he didn't. You know what I mean? So I don't think you can just be like, okay, Bernard, play guard, but we're going to try to get you to, to 320. He's already 100 pounds up. I don't think it's much more you can do with Bernard Raymond at this point. You know? Stephen White says, I agree, but I like Raymond. I like Raymond too. But we're only talking about 24.
Jermaine Johnson to piss me off too. What? Let's get into the phone. Allison gonna like this. Uh, Lane, what up? Hey, what's up, bud? What's up, Lane? What you got for the show, brother? I was going to see what you think about three defensive prospects that are uh, looking to go in the top 45. Sure. Two were going higher than the last one. It's uh, Perry and Winfrey, okay. uh, Hamilton, and uh, Trent McDuffie. Yeah, Trent McDuffie. Okay. Uh, uh, Trent McDuffie, didn't he run like high 4-4, four, four, something like that? <laughs> Uh, sure. I didn't. I didn't super pay attention to the combine because you know I just hate the combine in general. But um, but I love his tape though. I love his tape, McDuffie. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you uh do you think it'd be better at corner or a nickel safety hybrid? Sort of like what uh, what's his face that 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 safety dude that uh that Atlanta drafted last year, Grant Richie Grant. Richie Grant. One. I got you. Um, I don't think he would be a free safety but and and look this is interesting right i'm not making a player comparison necessarily so i don't want people to lose their mind right but when i was a when i was a wee lad in the 2016 draft i looked at jalen ramsey and i was like yo not only can this dude cover his ass off but he big as hell he long and he's a demon tackling people if y'all remember jalen ramsey's florida tape his tackling and, and and plus he played a lot of fucking safety, so let's just not get that mistaken, right? Florida Florida State definitely messed up there. But I was looking at Jalen Ramsey, you know, tackling, playing in the box. I'm like, man, let that dude be a good covering ass safety. You know what I'm saying? Like like they wanted to move him to corner because of his measurables, and that worked out. But when we first watched Jalen Ramsey at say at, at um Florida State, he was a good ass covering safety. I look at Trent McDuffie. And it's not just Trent McDuffie, it's 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 Washington. Because Washington had corners last year that ran around, tackled, and they were demons. They could play inside and outside. Um Elijah Molden was a guy that could do that. You know what I mean? Um year before that, uh Byron Murphy too. Yeah. Byron Murphy was a guy that did that year before. Like Washington is slowly fighting LSU as DBU, to be honest. You know what I mean? Um, so as I'm watching Trent McDuffie, I see a player that can play man. He's really smart in zone. He runs around really well, and he's a tackling ass fool. Now, corner is 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 more valuable than safety, so you wouldn't want to move him around too too much. But as a right. as a corner, is he a guy that can follow around your number one receiver to play inside and outside? Sure, I love that idea, one hundred percent. Yeah, sort of like. Uh... Like some some bad team might end up drafting him and trying to use him like Minka Fitzpatrick, mm-hmm. in Miami. But sure. yeah, uh, Kyle Hamilton. What do you think on him? His uh, overall grade, like top ten, like that. That seems to be the consensus, but I'm not too sure about that. I w- and, uh, his athleticism and uh, his position in general. I wouldn't call Kyle Hamilton a top 10 player, but I just want to be clear, man. People will hear me say that, and they'll think that I think that Kyle Hamilton's a bad player. I don't think he's a bad player. I just think he played box safety. <laughs> you know what I mean? He right. he just he just happens to, to play box safety. And all my favorite safeties ever in life do not go top 10. Um, Jamal Adams wasn't one of my favorite safeties, safeties of all time. He was a cool safety, but he wasn't one of my favorites. But guys like Malik Hooker. You know, guys right. like uh, Darnell Savage, guys like Derwin James. You know what I mean? Like safeties, just typically they they don't end up being top ten players. They don't end up being being drafted there. Now, Kyle Hamilton's a good player. He's a dude that can play around play around in the nickel. Do I trust him covering everybody in the nickel? Not really. Can he run around with a tight end or something? Sure, possibly. Um, do I think that he he'll be a good free safety? No. Did he have some pretty good rangy plays in the Florida State game? Yes. Has he had many rangy plays beside the Florida State game? Not really. Um, is he a tackling machine? Does he break down stuff in the run game? Is he a smart football player? 100%. But all those things just don't necessarily pan out to be a top 10 player in his draft for me so i think he'll be a good player i think he'll be a fun player in the league uh but top 10 player i don't i don't think i don't think uh i don't think that's hamilton but i do think he's a good player though right what what i'm thinking is sort of somewhere in between uh curse and uh isaiah simmons sure not isaiah simmons at all because isaiah simmons is a freaking nature sure but uh more like, uh, well, like you said, box safety. Sure. But, uh, and so that, that position ain't too, uh, you know, valuable. So. Sure. 
Yeah. So, so some bad team's going to draft him and make him uh, get uh, cut after about three years of it. Okay, so watch this, right? Watch this, right? Chat box, let's just play a little game of who would you rather have. Would you rather have Kyle Hamilton or Drake London? Would you rather have Kyle Hamilton or um, Jordan Davis? Would you rather have Kyle Hamilton or Devontae Wyatt? Would you rather have Kyle Hamilton or Derek Stingley? You know, if you're a quarterback needy team, would you rather have Kyle Hamilton or a quarterback? You see what I'm saying? So not that we shitting on Kyle Hamilton. It's just that I think that naturally, you know, the board would just play its way out. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, it's just it's just Kyle, you know. Kyle Hamilton and uh, Jordan Davis are not too dissimilar. Where like with Jordan Davis, his uh, questions are like availability with his uh, well dexterity and all hell. He uh, was rotating in and out of Georgia. That's where that's where I that's where I, that's where I pardon me. That's where I kind of disagree with you. I think not only is Jordan Davis good enough to fuel his own uh, his own not wealth but his own. Uh, usefulness, right? His own use, right? He can he can right. fuel his own, you know, by himself, right? But then Jordan Davis is the type of role player that makes everybody else better. You see what I'm saying? That's why teams kind of okay. devalue yeah. box safeties, right? Like like where does a box safety help another player? Like maybe in too high coverage or something like that. If you got a really savvy box player, but besides that. You know what I mean? Like, like, what does does Hamilton do for the grand scheme of things? I think Jordan Davis is fantastic on his worth. That was that's what I'm looking for. Uh, jo- uh, Jordan Davis brings his own worth, but then he makes Michael Parsons better. You see, you see what I mean? That's just what I'm, you know, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah. In, in a vacuum, uh, what I what I was saying sort of makes sense, but when you got Michael Parsons running back. Uh, there, man. Yeah. Goddamn okay. Right. Okay. Goddamn, I, I see where you're coming goddamn from. Goddamn right. Goddamn right. Carl Lewis. Um, and and uh, who else you said? You said somebody else? Uh, Perry and Winfrey. Uh, Oklahoma defensive tackle. Yeah, Perry. Like three tech. Yeah, Perry. I'm probably yeah. like a like a day like a day two guy. Um, but you know what no. what what makes evaluating him kind of weird is. Oklahoma like to do dumb shit with you know with their D line or whatnot you know so uh, I I mean he's a he's a a cool player cool little athlete cool little strength um, kind of raw he needs to, he needs to do some things better solid with his hands I guess kind of sort of but you know he he's a guy that kind of gets lost in the sauce you can catch him you can reach block him things like that but if you need a three tech I mean you know there's not a lot of three techs in this draft so you know, you know do what you gotta do you know figure there's it out. Uh, there's one other thing too you know like are are you a big guy on uh, arm length for guys in the trenches? Um, it depends. It so we talking about D line or O line? D D line O line, just whatever. Like uh, arm like length. Linderbaum, his arms are a little shorter, but doesn't matter because he's good. But yeah, yeah. Well, you need nuance to get around that, you know. So right. it, because okay, so so for example, like Rashawn Slater had short arms. But he, he he's so good with hand placement. He's so good with hand fighting. His his hands are so quick that it's rare that somebody got in his chest. If somebody did get in his chest, he knew what to do to work himself back into proper position. Everybody's not good with their hands like that. Some some guys like to just, you know, buckle down and get pushed back. Um, Trevor Penning is a guy. Uh, he got long arms, but if you get inside of him, it ain't going to happen. I mean, he, he ain't going to do shit to you. You know what I mean? So it kind of works in that way. Yeah. And the same with with uh, with uh, D-line. If, if, you let, if you let a long arm tackle get in your chest, how, you know, what's the timing of your hand swipe? Can you get somebody hands off of you before they get hands on you? You know what I mean? Shit like that. So it comes down to hand technique and nuance if you got short arms. And everybody ain't got hand technique, and a lot of people got, got short arms. So it just depends on the player. Right. Now, Perry and Winfrey doesn't have short arms. Sure. Like the, the, uh, the, the average arm length for an NFL tackle is 34 inches, give sure. or take. Sure. Perry and Winfrey has uh, over 35 inches sure. arms. Sure. So uh, he's, uh, he's, got a little, he's a little unique in that department, and he's sort of a prototypical three tech. He's got a little bit of work to do, but, sure. I mean, he's got, he's got that uh, sort of built-in advantage with him. Sure. 
one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean he he uh, he does have have that advantage. Um, but you know, just just ask yourself, right? Okay, he has the the physical side of it, but does he have the nuance to go along with that? Because if you got sh- long arms and and nothing else, then you're just a bull rusher, like you know Jermaine Johnson. Or you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> but if you can use that arm length to then parlay that into other moves, then that's when you're a special rusher. But until then, you know, you just, you know. Yeah, this is, this is, all, this is all coming back to your, uh, your, your floor guy. Right. I'm very much so floor guy. Hey, look, if there's yeah. any argument, I need to write that down for soliloquies. Hey, look, I am 100% floor guy. I like some ceiling guys, but you got to have some kind of floor for me to like you. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Patrick, that's, uh, uh, that's why you don't like Raymond. Patrick just said, that's exactly why I don't like Ram. Uh Patrick Buck in the chat box says, I know I didn't just pay $5 to get ignored. Sir, I'm on the phone. Rudeness. Rudeness. And then you behind, and then you behind Ed Barnes. Wait your turn, sir. I appreciate you. But wait your turn, sir. What was you saying, Lane? My bad. Oh nothing. I was uh, I was just I was just uh, talking about your uh, ceiling floor sort of thing. One this, more question. This man want me uh, to hang up with you. <laughs> How rude. That's Kyle rude. Hamilton That's or rude. Derek Stingley. Stingley, for sure. Stingley's a, a much better player than Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, I feel like a bunch of people are getting sort of uh they're getting sort of recency bias with him, not for seeing sure. him in a while and him having that weird injury that's had him out for the last For sure. Well, way too long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. That's all you he's, got? Uh, oh, well, go, go, go ahead. Definitely. Go, go, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I was just asking, was that all you had before we move on to uh, to the next call? Yeah, I yeah, agree yeah, with you saying, right. though. You, you, you can get those super chat people now. <laughs> Appreciate you, Lane, man. Great call, man. Sorry somebody had to be so Thanks. rude that they tried to rush you off the phone. Appreciate you, Lane. Uh, floor... Or it's a process, man. Yeah, we got to go through it. And then he came on and said, Law Nation did it to me. Yeah, I'm not law. <laughs> Shouts out to Law Nation, though. Law, my God. Look, it's a lot of things that got to happen. I got to write down this soliloquy topic. I got to make sure Lane's off the phone. I got to tell Ed, Ed from Atlanta to hang tight and don't hang up. And 832, we're going to get to you in a second. It's a lot of sequence and shit that we got to, you know what I mean? I gotta uh I gotta cut my talk music back on and shit like it, it's it's a process, fam. It's a, you know. I gotta clean my glasses off. I'm clean my glasses off. I gotta get the other lens. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, bro. Like before I get the before I get to your super chat. Let me wipe my left. I gotta look at them, make sure they cool. I gotta, the shirt not good enough. I got to get the microfiber. Cl- it's a lot of shit I got to do before I get to your super chat, Pat. Like, hang tight, sir. Like, hold on. Let me get the other lens. That's much better. Hey, we got a super chat from Ed Barnes. <laughs> Let me put them up on the screen. We ain't doing nothing now. <laughs> he dropped uh, 10 euros in a super chat. He says, uh, what would you prioritize, guard, center, or tackle? To me, Terrence Steele is easily the worst start on the line, and everybody talking about us drafting a guard slash center. Well, Terrence Steele going to have to start for you. And I also think that, uh, I don't know. Hey, Patrick dropped the dub in the super chat, man. Plasma. Let me not even finish Ed's question. Let's see. Patrick Bark, what he said. Uh, I love the channel. I'm sorry, sir. It's all good. We're kind of forever, my guy. It's all good, my guy. Uh, <laughs> but Ed Barnes, um, I think we we got to go left guard. So if we talking about draft this year, we're only talking about draft this particular year, um, you got to prioritize guard over tackle because we got tackles, but we ain't really got guards. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, tackles are more valuable than guards. You see what I'm saying? So there we go. Burke, my bad. Shit, my, I said Bark. Uh, look, this is why I said Bark because I saw a dog. <laughs> I saw a dog. 
Let me tell y'all some shit. Like, 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 like just some shit that that just bothers. Just, look, I downloaded TikTok, right? And I don't even, I don't, I don't even like TikTok for real, for real. But you know, you know my girls say download. TikTok. I download TikTok. <sighs> my old lady say download TikTok, so I download TikTok, right? So she'll she'll send me TikToks, or whatever. I'll, I'll I'll watch them, and sometimes I'll get into it, whatever, right? But this is the bad thing about TikTok, right? Is they'll they'll send you some random shit that you might like, right? Like amongst your general likes on TikTok, they'll throw in some shit that you might like on TikTok. And I swear, for a whole thirty minutes yesterday, I watched videos of dogs sprinting. No shit. TikTok is the devil. I'm just I, I I just I saw one video of this dog sprinting on a damn conveyor belt. And I looked at this lady's TikTok and all her videos were surrounded, you know, by dogs sprinting on a conveyor belt. And for 30 minutes I watched videos of dogs sprinting on a conveyor belt. I felt sick, but I was entertained. <laughs> I was entertained, but I was sick, man. Let's read Patrick's other super chat. <laughs> Appreciate you, Ed, for the 10 euros. Uh, Patrick Burke, not Bark, Burke. Um, Draw five, it says, uh, if Jordan Davis fall to the 20s, we need to trade up. I wouldn't trade up because, you know, trading from 24 to 20, that's like a third round pick or something, dog. It's like a like a third round pick or some shit but and and you and you kind of want your your third round picks this year but boy i'm going to jail i am the father you hear me if jd make it goodness let me go to this caller that's not platinum, but they've been waiting for a while. So we're gonna show them a little bit of love, see who they are, and then we're gonna go to Ed from Atlanta. Then we're gonna go Shaq the Vikings fan. Eight three two, what up? Hey, what's up, Jay? What's up, Botch? Who? What up, Botch? Who is Jay? <laughs> see, that's I said, said Botch. You 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 said Jay. You said what up, Jay? I mean, uh, Botch. That what you said. You just said it. I I hey. Give me two seconds. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a goddamn minute. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. I am the. Let's f- see who they are. Then we're gonna go to Ed from Atlanta. Then we're gonna go Shaq the Vikings fan. Eight three two. What up? Hey, what's up, Jay? What's up, Mike? You lie. You lie, sir. You lie. Don't lie to me. You lie. I'm going to Ed. I'm going to Ed. Ed from Atlanta. I'm, you don't lie to me. Ed from Atlanta. What's up, sir? What you got for the show? Who is Jay? What's up? What's going on, Jay? What it do? Who the fuck is Jay? We hanging up on Ed from Atlanta. I hate it. We going to Shaq the Vikings fan. What up, Shaq? How you doing, Vikings? What what's good? Jay. What's good, Shaq? Let me say your name correctly. What's up, Shaq? What you got for the show? Cause you're on the line right now. Oh, uh, I'm I'm a bit confused. Um, while fans is hand on Derek Stanley, sure, they, I don't understand. Right, they kind of said he only had one good year. Do they <laughs> not know that one year? Yeah, was literally top five for any quarterback that played college football. It's better than all years. It's better than Sauce Gardner's year. It's better than McDuffie's year. It's better than anybody's year for sure. Not only not I, not not only from his personal. Um, not only look, it's it's the best year from his own personal, like whatever, like his personal stuff or whatever, like his personal play, uh, and then mm-hmm. the fucking talent that he played. You know what I mean? He was in a damn a damn meat grinder of SEC receivers and tight ends that year. We can't we can't pretend like Derek Stingley ain't fantastic, or that his freshman campaign wasn't the best campaign, bro. I, I think I think people just overthinking Stingley a little bit, you know. Yeah, I, I believe because of the injuries, but you know, a lot of players can't perform at their best when they got a little nicks on their body. Yeah, and then you got LSU not doing as good as when they had Joe Burrow, so you know he probably weighed his options a little like right. I'm more important than. Playing these games. I already put what I could do out on the tape. For sure. Last I checked, film never lies. Even though he got hurt, um, 
and he couldn't play as good as he did freshman year, that freshman year still happens. You could go watch it, and I believe his ball skills don't disappear. You can't coach that, really. For sure. For sure. What I'm saying? Um, and, you know, um, every now and then, like like Cowboy fans in particular, I think we get blessed with players that open up our perspective on certain traits because they, they do it so well. Um, like – when Dez Bryant was here, we like we really got an idea of what like fifty fifty balls were like, you know what I mean, or like uh uh, uh seventy thirty balls. Like like we really got an up close view of it, whether it be D Law with his hands and his pass rush ability, or uh, you know Cooper with his route running and shit like that. I think Trey Diggs is really trying to get us like. Or he he's really teaching us what ball skills can do for a corner. Because once upon a time, ball skills kind of all look the same, right? Just if you can play the ball in the air, you got ball skills. Trey Diggs pushes the boundary of corner with ball skills. So now we understand what that is. I think Stingley got the same kind of ball skills Trey Diggs got. Just the 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 ability to feel comfortable in coverage, look back and snatch the ball out the air like a receiver. Stingley's that kind of dude. And you can't teach that and you simply don't forget it, you know? Yeah, we was definitely doing that against uh, Georgia. I don't, I don't remember, but there was this one play he was running down the field. He didn't return his head. He just put his hand up sure. and caught it. Sure. I was like, yeah, he's going top ten. Sure, sure, one hundred percent. What else you got? So, um, I was just saying, if he so happens to fall to twelve, the Vikings better draft him. They did not skip on that talent. Yeah, a lot of people think he he has a high bust potential, but who doesn't in the draft? Sure, sure. I mean, that's 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 fair. Sure, that's fair. But like you know, I still think it's overthinking, right? Because if, if I'm watching the film on Stingley and I go, "Man, your freshman campaign was the best cornerback tape t- tape I've ever seen," and your recent your junior tape was really good. It wasn't a freshman tape, but it was really good. I'm drafting that dude, and I'm like, yo, bro, what I got to do to get you back to freshman year? You know what I mean? That's what these 30 visits are for. That's what the 30 visits are so important for, right? We get to ask you questions like this. Like, yo, fam, what happened here? And what I got to do to get you back right here? So, hey, man, you you as a Vikings fan, you are in, you're definitely in territory to draft a guy like uh, DS, but if you fall to 24, thanks. <laughs> I, I can't see that happening, but I'm sorry. Me neither, my guy. Me you neither. May, you may have got the CD Lamb kick correct, but Derek Singh can't fall that far unless, you know, he got a gun under the seat. <laughs> I would much rather retire undefeated. I feel you, my guy. Shaq the Vikings fan. Appreciate you, sir. <laughs> All right. Thank you, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what makes a really good show is when – the viewers are in tune to the content as well, man. Ed from Atlanta, I got to give you credit for being a fantastic sport and being in tune to the content and what makes a great show. Ed from Atlanta, bravo to you, sir. I give you a work call. I give you a work call. What you got for the show, my brother? You made a good moment. Shouts out to you, man, but go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, I want to revisit something I said last show. Now that now that you done rewatched some film on some guys, please let's revisit Steen versus Hamilton. Okay. Let me let me hear your thoughts on it. Who would you draft for your Cowboys? Um, both different players. And now that I think about it, it's kind of interesting. I don't really think there's a big gap between Hamilton and the next few guys. I, I I think Hamilton does some things well, but if we talk about like what Hamilton does really well, right? Yo, yo, Hamilton, what do you do really well? Like, you know, he's a he's a he's a he's a tackler. You know, what I mean, he's a tackler. He's an athlete. You know, I look at scene and I go and, and, and I just see him thrashing people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I see I see scene from deep coming down thrashing people and actually making tackle. I don't I don't see much of a difference. You know what I mean? Like, you know, maybe one guy's a little more sure and the other guy's a little more physical of a tackle. I, I don't know. But then when we talk about, like, free safety ability, I think Scene actually has ability to play free safety in terms of, like, athleticism, seeing and, like, getting there. I don't think Hamilton has pure free safety ability. So if somebody told me that Scene was better than Hamilton, I don't hate it. I don't hate it necessarily. Now, I, now, I'm not ready to come out and make my bold claim or whatever, but I just think, you know, sometimes we overrate these box safeties a little bit. And I look at scene and I go, you know what? I, this this is this an easy way to sum it up. I would rather have 
the free safety that can hit than the box safety that I think can be rangy. I'll say that. I would too, and that's why I have him ranked. And what one interesting thing about seeing is just war call you, bro. Time out, man. I'm just war call you, bro. Hold on, bro. Let me just war call you for being a little fearless right there, man, because that's some fearless shit to say. But go ahead, man. I'm listening to you. Tape don't lie, but listen. In off coverage, Lewis seen is the best safety I've seen in a while. And off coverage purely, and that's one thing schematically that he gives you that Kyle Hamilton doesn't. If you like blitzing slot corners or you like blitzing extra linebackers from a uh, larger, like, 4-3 base packages, sure. then Lewis Steen is your guy because that linebacker can come free. And Lewis Steen on off coverage on the slot's easy money. Yeah, They run deep crossing routes. He's got speed to make that up. So schematically, he gives you a lot of flexibility as well. Sure. 100%, Mr. Wolf. And, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting, man. You know, if you say this, a lot of people will be like, oh, you're overthinking it, you're overthinking. I don't think this is overthinking. I think we're really putting into perspective how good Hamilton is. But at some point, we got to talk about usage. We got to talk about usage. And I would always rather the rangy player over the box player, right? Even if you look at, like, a guy like uh, Dax Hill. Dax Hill – um, plays a lot of box and nickel, but I do think that him being able to play free safety will bump him up to safety rankings a little bit. I think both those dudes are better free safeties than Kyle Hamilton, even though Dax does more. But as if I had to put everybody at free safety, those two dudes play free safety better than Kyle Hamilton. You, you, you understand where I'm going here? It's, 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 I don't know, man. It's a little, it's a little interesting. It's a little interesting, but, but go ahead. I'm listening to you. Yeah, you, you might as well say it, but we'll, we'll move off. Ex explain uh, Drake London to me now. So I don't have him as high as you. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to see your, your thoughts on him. So, and, and, and you know, my, my, mind you, let me, let, me go to my, let me go to my rankings just to make sure everything is good. Um, what I do like about Drake London, right, is, first of all, I like, I like route runners, you know. Route runners are cool. Drake London ain't the best this, this, this route runner, but he is a good route runner for his size. And then you take how he wins, and then you look at how he's used, right? He's not like a guy that falls victim of being a big guy. Like some of these bigger guys, they'll be like slower possession type dudes. I think he's a guy that can move around a little bit. Now, in the league, do I think he's going to be getting jet sweeps and shit like he got at, at USC? I wouldn't be giving Drake London jet sweeps and shit. And I don't think that Drake London is, is a Mike Evans type of character. But I do think as a big guy, if he's going to be, you know, good hands guy, contested catch guy, high point guy, but then he can also give me some route running on the back end. Plus, I, I, I can rely on him in terms of usage. Like if I want to give him nine to ten targets, I can rely on him actually making those catches and being, you know, being like a yak guy or whatever because I put a lot of, you know, I put a lot of points in the yak these, these days also. Um then that'll be my reason for Drake London being high. And then if you just start to put him next to some of the guys that I got under him, it's his combination of traits put together um, that puts him that high on my list. That makes sense? Yeah, it, it does. And then uh, so what do you think the difference is between him and a guy like Pickens? Watson? I know you have Pickens five, but Oof. I think they're almost the same player. I just think you have more evidence from Drake London. We got a lot more evidence from Drake London. Um, pick is really only five games of <laughs> of fucking pickings you can watch. But from those five, and look, I'm floor guy. You know what I mean? I love what I can see right now. But and look, 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 bro. Try not to be a Georgia fan here. I hear I hear what you're doing right. I try to be the Georgia fan. But when I when I watch pickings, man, I see that motherfucker run routes. And I see that quickness and explosion out of them routes. And I see them hands. And I see him setting people up in space. And I go, hmm, I just gotta, I just, I just gotta see it some more. That's my only problem. I see spurts of it, because it's I only see spurts like like you really like Pickens is really gonna is really gonna be the guy that people gotta watch to be like, okay, this is film evaluation. Cause you gotta you gotta watch the plays where he don't even get the ball. You see what I'm saying? Like you gotta watch the How plays. How do you feel about Pickens as a blocker? 
I think some recent Twitter clips have really got people uh, smitten over uh, Pickens as a blocker, but I do think he's a good initiator in terms of blocking. I do think he does have uh, some early uh, some early thump in his hands. Uh, he could be better as like a uh, not gripper, not grabber, but as a um, initiator and maintainer. He can be he can be better there, but I have seen him put some good initial pops on people. I think that's more important for getting off the line of scrimmage than actually blocking people. To be fair, and he does that really well. He gets off the line of scrimmage those, uh, really well. Like, go ahead. I think he'd be annoying for corners like Denzel Ward, the smaller corners. Sure. I think he'd be really annoying because getting pushed down is very annoying. I don't know how many uh, people have played football, sure. but if you just get sit the fuck down like that, sure. getting up is not fun in football, especially at corner when you're playing that many snaps to defensive possession. Sure. But I do still have London over Pickens. I was just wondering what you thought sure. about him. And what about Burks as well? I think you have him lower on the list than I think most people do, which I'm kind of with you. Trey At least I believe you do. You just say your full rankings, but what, what are your thoughts on him? This will be the last ranking I give you. I get you. This is this this last one. Um, I got Burks at six. Um, he's right after um, he's right after Pickens. Um, and I think Burks is another guy that we just kind of gotta have a conversation about. You know, because how? So look, him, 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 the way he was used in Arkansas, right? Was he used that way because the quarterback is bad, or was he used that way because he's limited? You see what I'm saying? I think I think that's what you I think that's the first question that you got to answer for yourself. Um, and then then you ask yourself, OK, what does he do well? And mind you, let me say this. Just because you may be really good at something doesn't mean you should be drafted higher than somebody. Debo Samuel was drafted properly. It's just that they only use him for what he's good at. Debo Samuel is not necessarily a complete receiver. Right. I look at Traylon Burks. He's not a complete receiver, neither. But he's really good at what he's really good at. And if you was if you were to use him in a situation where he's really good at that, then fine. But just ask yourself, what if a team took that away from him, then what would you have? And I don't want to just, you know, put Traylon Burks in this box like he's only um halftime running back. He's only, you know, short pass yak dude, because there are some 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 deep passes that Traylon Burks goes up and he and he and he and he, uh, and he, and he, and he uh, comes down with him. But besides that vertical, that one vertical threat, not even up the seams, but just like jump ball situation, right? So besides that nine route jump ball situation and him being a short pass yak guy, I just got to see it, and I haven't seen it from from Traylon Burks. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's my thing. And uh, Falcons fans think that uh, instead of Garrett Wilson, you should draft him if we draft a receiver. Well, that's wrong. And that's patently <laughs> the most re retarded shit I've ever heard of in my life. That's wrong. But it, it goes back to what you're saying. Just because Kyle Shanahan can make Debo Samuel work doesn't mean that Arthur Smith can. And if Arthur Smith can't wait, can't make uh, Garrett Wilson work, then that's a that's an Arthur Smith problem. That's that's not a talent problem there. I actually so, think the 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 opposite of Garrett Wilson. I think Burks only works if you use him properly. I think Garrett Wilson can go in anybody's system and do everything. You know what I mean? Like he can do anything you ask him to do because of how he yeah, gets that, open. That's and, my point. That's yeah, my go point. Ahead. I got but you. The, right. the scheme fit thing is just because just because they see that Traylon Burks is a very good uh yards after catch guy, they think that he's better than Wilson. Plus he's a he's a little stockier and, and runs through people a little more and sure. they try to do the comp where, you know, they had AJ Brown before, but you don't you don't pass up talent just because they're scheme fit. That that's a later round thing. Scheme fit is more towards the later round, sure. in my opinion. Sure. But I, I like piling on people. Uh, I I don't need the ranking for them, but just did you rewatch any Jermaine Johnson? Yes. I, I look. Watch this, bro. And I think I just watched some today too. And so watch this. All of it. Look, if, if anybody was in my Patreon when I was going through my Jermaine Johnson thing, right? So we watched Jermaine Johnson and I didn't get it. And I went on the internet and I told people that I didn't get it. I was met with a little bit of outrage and I proceeded to torture my chat with nine games of Jermaine Johnson. We watched a lot of them. We even went back to the Georgia tape. We watched a lot of fucking Jermaine Johnson. And what I saw was correct. And the funny thing about it, 
even these people that champion Jermaine Johnson, they'll be like, oh, Vach, he's a top 10 pick. Okay, well, break down Jermaine Johnson for me. They'll be like, hey, well, so he will disappear on film. Stop right there. <laughs> Stop, that's it. Stop right there. I don't see a – I think people are kind of making narratives up a little. I don't see a dominant run player in Jermaine. I think I see a player that kind of gets a little lazy in the run game, honestly. I see a dominant unblocked player. Sure. When, yeah, when, yeah. So, so we got to talk about that too. How you win. Va- and, and mind you, Vash is floor guy, right? How do you win? I look at Jermaine Johnson, and look, he, he got plays. He got Like, if you watch a Jermaine Johnson highlight tape, I can see why you said it. But if you watch film on Jermaine Johnson, I simply do not see how you look at that dude and be like, oh, that dude right there is a top 10 pick. Now, you may look at his combine and say that, but I'm not combine guy. I'm I'm film guy. I'm floor guy. So that's why I, I kind of got Jermaine Johnson a little low. Tell me what you see in him, Ed. I mean, it's the same thing. I watched. I watched two games over, and I called it quits. I watched Notre Dame and Miami, and the Miami game, is I, there's the one play where the tackle does a, a ballerina spin because he gets caught with both feet in the air, which was embarrassing, but that wasn't really a product of what Jermaine Johnson did right. And although that may be a little harsh to say, it's, it's truth. If you can just look at the full tape, he doesn't do that to anybody else. But the only thing he did is he hit somebody with a hezzy, defeated hands outside, and got the sack fumble. And those two games... That was the only rep I was impressed with. Sure. And that's, a t- that's, that's who a lot of Falcons fans want to eat. And sure. I, I, would, I would completely throw up if we drafted him. And, but I said this last time, too. How the fuck are you a fifth-year senior with no moves? How? <sighs> are you going to get better in the league? You had five years of college. Hey, and yo, you're still run through the middle of you guy. Yo, look, this was a um, this was a, a fantastic point here. Danny Savage says uh, Jermaine Johnson had had three sacks versus Miami. First of all, uh, Miami's a a bad offensive line as a whole, and he only got those sacks from running free and picking on the right tackle. When Jermaine lined up over, because all this was, was on Patreon, by the way. Uh, when Jermaine Johnson lined up over the left tackle, Jermaine really didn't get a whole bunch of production over over the left tackle. When I think of a dominant game, I want you to line up smoking people. When I think of like Karloftis versus Notre Dame, that's a dominant game. Jermaine Johnson versus Miami wasn't a dominant game. He got he got some some he got some some numbers, got some stats. But when you watch the game, bro, I I don't see it. I don't see it, man. But you know, it is what it is. I ain't gonna say nothing else. So, is, is there a pass rusher that you like more besides Karloftis, of course, that you like more than everybody else late? I already told you mine is Ebikite. I don't know how you still feel on him. But who's your guy? Do you like for maybe I guess maybe second rounder, or maybe lower if you want to go that low? Uh, Cam Thomas is fun. Let me let me, let me go. I I got rankings. Uh, so you're only talking about late guys, right? Like later guys. Yeah, later. Um, I like uh Eb Ibikity, Ibik, Penn State. <laughs> I like Arnold. Um, I like uh, That's my guy. I like Kingsley and Igbari. I like Cam Thomas and Boye Mafe. Those those are my those are my like round like later. You know, day two guys that I would consider liking. What they, about they, Drake Jackson? Where do you have him? You think he's on par with those guys if you draft him in the second? Now, Drake Jackson in 2021 played different than 2020, so you really got to focus on on his tape. I like his arm length or whatever. I just think he needs to put it together, you know, better. He plays like a three tech though. Like he plays like he's running through people. Um, he just needs to like put a little more polish on his game but he's a solid player i'll say this about any player like these edges in particular this year they're 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 very misleading because you look at them and you will see stand-up linebacker looking dudes and they'll be kind of slim but they'd be like raw pass rushers but they really good versus the run you know what i'm saying sanders is like that from uh cincinnati um it's a lot of guys like that to where I like their run game a lot better than I like them as as pass rushers. And they're really just raw uh, raw athletes as pass rushers with, like, with like not a bunch of nuance. So um, there's definitely a lot of uh, technique to be desired with this with this class or whatever. And a lot of them dudes kind of, you know, kind of blend in with each other. But um, you just got to, uh, you know, you know, pick your favorites and rank them like that. But I don't hate none of your guys. They cool. The conference has been locked. Go ahead. Cool. And- Last thing before I let you get off, and I'll, I'll let you explain this because some, some people may wonder since the evidence on tape is not there for two players in particular, sure. uh, what is your difference between uh, Walker and, and Johnson? Trevon Walker and Jermaine Johnson? Yes. 
at least Jermaine Johnson system wise, they use him the way he would be used. Trevon Walker, I don't think he's been put in a situation where he can fully be himself just yet. But me being floor guy, I, I need to see both. I need to see more from both of them. I need to see more from um from um both of them. Uh, but at least you could see when Trevon Walker makes plays, you can at least see, okay, well, there's some extension there. There's some hands there. There's some this here, there, you know? Um, and not just much of the, the the flashy plays that we saw from Jermaine, you know? Yeah, I feel that. The, the most annoying thing about Walker's tape is the amount of blitzes that we like to send where he's just told to run in B or A gap and put hands on people, sure. which he does get penetration sometimes on that, but it's, it's frustrating to not see him rush on the edge. You did see him in the national championship more than, than all the other games, and he he did have a few decent moves against Neil, but sure. it's, it just leaves you to be desired. But he is the better athlete than Johnson. Sure, 100%. That is true. That is true. At at, at 270 pounds, he's, yeah, he's, he's bigger. I think he's like, what, 10, 10, 15 pounds bigger than him? And um, and he's the better athlete, so that, that says something to you. That says something, something, something there. Appreciate you, brother Ed. Thanks for the content. Chat box, can we get flame for Ed? Uh, Ed from Atlanta, the Falcons and Georgia uh, Bulldogs fan for for holding our content down. Appreciate you, sir. Appreciate you, sir. We got four more calls. We got how many people got watching live? We got three hundred and forty six people watching live right now. Hey, we got some big things coming next week. Stay tuned. I'm, I'm I'm saying next week. I mean, like in like two days. So <laughs> we got some big things coming Tuesday. Be sure to stay tuned. Be around. Kind of open up your schedule. Be free around like 2 p.m. or, or so. You know what I mean? I got a mission for y'all. Y'all gonna y'all gonna y'all gonna get some y'all gonna get some uh some content. You know what I mean? You're gonna get some content Tuesdays. So I, I just I just I just need y'all around. I need y'all around. If you can't be here Tuesday, or like if you if you if you can't be here at 2 Central Time Tuesday. I will leave instructions in the chat, the description, the beginning, and the end of the stream. So watch on demand, and let's get this mission done correctly, man. Not just for me, but all of Cowboy Nation, all of all of 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 the the Cowboy YouTube community. I got a mission for y'all tomorrow, so just make sure you're around. Everybody that's watching on, that's watching this on um, playback demand or whatever, just be sure you're around tomorrow. Um, also, after this, when we end this stream. I'm going to take 30 minutes to get a bite to eat. Then we're going to go over to twitch.tv slash Vach Lombardi, and we're going to play Elden Ring, and we're going to just chill. And if y'all got something that y'all may want Vach to react to, hit the chat box or whatever, then we'll kind of react to it, whatever y'all want to do. We're just going to go over there, and we're just going to be cooling. But uh, ultimately, we're going to end up playing Elden Ring over there. All right? <clears throat> um, I want to get through these calls, though, and I don't want to spend too, too much time, but I do want to get to them. We got Kyle up next. Uh, pardon me, Uncle Charlie up next, Kyle on deck, Tony T in the hole, and we're going to end up with a 949. Let's, oh, I didn't put him back on mute. Shit, hold on. Here we go. Uncle Charlie, what up? What's up, nephew? What's going on, player? What's man, happening, man? Man, cooling my guy, man. Life good. I can't complain about nothing, you feel me? Well, you know what? You know what? You know what, Botch? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, man. You have been, it's been as far as by the man upstairs to do what you do. You're the best in the game, and you know that ain't that going to change about that, man. But let me just say this, bro. Let me say this. I am tired. I'm sick and tired of the Cowboys. This time, when you go in the, go in the draft and get an offensive lineman, try not to get the one with the walls real sharp where he can't reach in his pocket and get his wallet. <laughs> would, you talk, would you not do that? I need an offensive lineman where he can reach out his front door across the street and get his mail out the mailbox. That's the kind of office I need. Right. But let me ask you a question. I got, two, I got a two-pack question. Yes, sir. Do you think that the Dallas Cowboys need to be looking in the SEC for a left tackle or even a guard or left or right tackle? And do you think that the NFL, the draft this year is little with uh, 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 good receivers? And if so, who do you think we need to be looking at receivers? Um, I do think we're going to be looking at tackle because um, – Terrence is going to be starting now. Uh, Lael is gone, and Terrence still is starting. So uh, what's his face from last year from Marshall? Um, he's going to be the swing guy, air quote. You know, he's going to be the um, swing guy, but we're going to draft it. In my opinion, we're either going to bring in a tackle or draft a tackle to um, compete with him. 
uh, to see who the uh, who the uh, backup left tackle, right tackle guy is. So um, in my mind, sure, we probably should be looking at a tackle. We and we got enough picks that Josh Ball, thank you. Uh, we have enough picks to where we uh, we uh, should be, you know, figuring that out or whatever. Um, should we find him in the SEC? Shit, it'd be nice. <laughs> it'd be nice. Uh, you know, should we, you know, get a get a tackle that's a tackle that can also play guard? Sure. From the SEC, uh, from Georgia, uh, Jamari Salyer is a guy that can do that. You know, there's a – Kenyon Green is an SEC guy that can play guard and tackle for you, you know. So just, you know, keep your eyes open and see what you can find. Darren Kennard from Kentucky is an SEC guy uh, that can play guard and tackle. I'm a little impressed that I can do this on the fly right now. Perfect. But whatever. Um, and as far as wide receivers, yes, Unc, there is a gang of receivers uh, that we can um, that we can pick from, you know. So – it's, it's about three rounds worth of receivers, and then the other teams got to draft two. So those dudes might end up going in the fourth. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. Now, let, let me ask you what about this one specific receiver, and then I'm going to get to my closing. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Williams out of Alabama? Jameson Williams can play. He uh, tore his ACL, uh, so he might fall. A lot of people have him as their number one receiver. He's a route runner, very explosive, good hands. Did I mention he was explosive? Fast as hell. Did yep. I mention he was explosive? <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh uh Jameson Williams, you know, he's in the he's in the he's in the, he's my he's my number uh he's my number two where I didn't gave y'all my whole top six. But uh Jameson Williams is my number two receiver and I'm not I'm not taking into account his ACL injury. I think modern medicine is uh good enough to where, you know, he's gonna go through his little surgery and therapy and he'll be he'll be just fine and he'll be ready to go. Um but just as a football player, Jameson Williams can play, on He can play. Well let me just say this let me say this in code. I wanna send out a service announcement to okay. all the cowboy brothers and sisters. Let me tell you something, man. I am sick and tired of giving people direction and they're killing me with this breath. This lady come up on me the other day and said, excuse me, do you know what Walmart? I said, what now? Walmart. And I, I swear about it. It smelled like she had a dead body in her throat. Let me tell you something. If you know anybody that's missing, I can tell you where they at. They're in that damn lady's throat. I can tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. Any two times you put ice in your mouth and it starts boiling, you need, you, need to go, you need to go see a doctor. Yeah. And then somebody tries to determine what the difference between halitosis and ass. Well, it ain't no difference. The only difference is you know what ass smell like and you know what halitosis smell like. Uh -huh. Let me just say this, man. I'm going to say this. I am sick of Rex Ryan with his toe finish behind. I'm sick of him. I'm having enough of him. Let me tell you something. I'm telling you what. I'm telling you all right now. Don't take your shoes and socks off. I'm telling you. He said them toes. He's going to he gonna get some fat back, sour belly, and some cornbread. Let me tell you something. They caught his ass up on 73 in Virginia. And he got 250 pairs of women's shoes on the back of the truck. This one off the truck. State trooper stopped his fat ass. He stopped it. And all of a sudden, he said, excuse me, sir, you got a lot of lady shoes on the back of the truck. We see them flying off. Uh, why do you got that? He said, I know I got them on the back of my truck. And I don't sniff them off. See, he makes me sick to my stomach with what he said about the cowboy. I don't have enough. And his chilling ass, I don't have enough. And I don't have enough of Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan, what you need to do is you need to stay out of foot lockers. Do that. Please do that. And that's all I got to say. I love you, nephew. Yo, Unc, whatever you do, this is what I need from you. From, from you. On Tuesday, we're going to have an interesting event. It's going to be around... Two, three central time. I just need you to be around. I just need you tuned in, and I need you to have a really good story for me. I just need you to go in your Rolodex, even if you've told it already. Just imagine that you're telling it for a new audience. I need, I need the best of you. You know what I'm saying? We're just gonna be working on something interesting, and I need a good story for you on uh, on a Tuesday, like around three central time. Can you do that for me, y'all? I got you, nephew, because I gotta go take my car and get service on Monday. Mm -hmm. I ain't got nothing on my on Tuesday for you, I will be there. And God willing, I will be there. Appreciate you, Uncle. Have a good one, man. Have yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chad, we got some things in the works, man. It'll all make sense. Please do Timberland and Terrorist. Vaughn, son, Vaughn, Vaughn, please. Um, yo, Uncle, look, look, Uncle, if you done made it back to the chat, <laughs> Uncle, if you done made it back to the video, can we please do Timberland and Terrorist? I know it's a lot of new people tuned in to, to, to this show that ain't never heard Timbaland and Terrorist. Chatbox, right now, have y'all heard the Uncle Charlie Timbaland and Terrorist story? Because I know that when we get...
I know they haven't heard Timbaland and Terrace. Oh, there's so many people that haven't heard Timbaland and Terrace. Uncle Charlie, please. Uncle Charlie, please. Oh, so many people. Oh, y'all. Oh, y'all ain't heard Timbaland and Terrace. I know. Yeah, where the fuck, where the fuck y'all been? See, that's y'all problem. Y'all don't tune into every single show. See, y'all be seeing Vach live and you'll just walk away saying, and you'll just, oh, well, Vach ain't talking about nothing new. You never, ever miss a Vach Lombardi show because you miss Timbaland and Timbaland. Wow, nobody spoil it, please. Patrick uh, dropped, a, uh, dropped a deuce and says, do you do you play Madden on your Twitch? I don't play Madden on my Twitch, but I do use Madden. Because I used to watch film on Twitch. Um, so I... I use the Madden drop to to not get uh to not get uh caught up with the Illuminati and shit. You know what I'm saying? But um Uncle Charlie, if you listening, and I just need you to confirm, can we get Timbaland and Terrace? <laughs> can we get Timbaland and Terrace for tomorrow? I mean for not uh not uh tomorrow for uh for uh Tuesday. Please, Uncle Charlie. My word. I play on a uh, on a uh, PC. Let's get uh somebody gone. No, it ain't. Okay, look, we got Kyle. somebody else gone. Yeah, we no. Yeah, we yeah. Okay, okay, nobody gone. Okay, we got Kyle up next. Tony T on deck. Nine four nine in the hole. Listen, if Uncle Charlie show up in the chat box, can somebody please tell him that Vach said um, on Tuesday? Can he tell the Timberland the the model Timberland Terry story? Can can we get that, please? Please, Uncle Charlie. Kyle, what up? Not much. Timberland and Terrorist is like a, a top tier name for a story, to even even without knowing the story. You have no clue. You have no <laughs> clue. But go ahead, though. My bad, brother Kyle. What you got for the show, man? Uh, you're good. I believe it is Uncle Charles' story. There's, there's, you can't have a clue going in. <laughs> I don't think it's followable. But I got two things. So one is. Jordan Davis and kind of even how our playoff game went has me kind of rethinking D tackle a little bit. Sure. So the 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 overarching narrative has kind of been that run stopping D tackles aren't very useful and it's all about pass rushing D tackles. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to see that it clearly works pretty well for Georgia to have a running stopping D tackle. Shit, yeah. And I think if you can commit less guys to stopping the run on first and second down, sure. you can end up playing the pass less hard or playing the pass better. Mm -hmm. and stopping the run, getting better 30 longs. Sure. So everyone talks about, like, hey, the whole point of getting a DT is to get off the field on third down. That's why you want a fast rushing DT. But if you get a run rush stopping DT, you can get third and long as opposed to third and short, which helps you get off the field on third down. So I, I think we should obviously not probably going to get Davis, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but I think we should be looking at a run stopping DT in the draft. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel about that. Um. I don't – so, look, I – position value is a real-life thing. I'm not going to pretend like it's not. But I do think position value only matters up to a point. Like, when you – when we're talking about elite football players, position value goes out the window. So, can you find another one-tech to be, like, a big-body one-tech? Sure. Um, John Ridgeway and uh, my man from um, – uh, UCLA, Ogbanyo, or whatever. Him and Neil from LSU. They're the same kind of guy. They're the big, heavy one tech that takes up space in the middle. But Jordan Davis ain't like that. Jordan Davis is a D tackle. He is a one tech, but he ain't like them cats. He's a little more than that. You know what I mean? Um, so position value only matters when the player's not elite. You see what I'm saying? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, don't get me wrong. Jordan Davis is another level. I mean, there's a reason he's talking about the first-round guy, and those guys are talked about as, like, third-round, fourth-round guys. I'm more so just saying I've seen the value he provides, and even, like, some lesser guys have provided some value for teams, and so I just – I don't see us as having a very good run-stopping one tech right now, like, unless you want to count Bohanna or maybe Gallimore. Mm -hmm. So I just think that's a, a position of need we should address going into the draft. Sure. And then the other thing is – and you're not going to like this one as much. I have some questions about Nakobe Dean. What are you saying, sir? And so, and so, at 24, I'm not mad at it, especially because I think he fits the Cowboys well. I just would worry about, as far as an evaluation, he gets blocked really easily if guys get to him. 
he's hard to get to because he's quick and he's to the ball faster. But if you isolate him and you put him on one side and you force the blocker onto him, he does not handle it as well. Is that true, sir? Maybe you. Is that like is that really true, sir? Is that I've re- seen them get blown up a few times on tape. I mean, in Alabama, you can see they put there's a couple plays where they isolate them and make it so they run at them and they have a free blocker. Well, that's Alabama's and offensive you can line. See them get pushed back. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, that's, that's Alabama's first. And then also, like I've seen Jermaine Johnson get blown up. Like what? What are we doing? What? what? And then well, I don't like Jermaine Johnson either. I drafted him before Jermaine Johnson. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> and then is 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 that really the reason why you down on the Kobe? Does that like that's the that one thing is the reason why? I mean, I still draft him at 24. Don't get me wrong. I'm more so saying for certain teams. For Dallas, even if you're going to intentionally scheme up blocking the Kobe Dean in Dallas, you just let Mike Parsons run free. I'll have him all day in Dallas. I'll take him at 10. I'll take him at 10, but but my team ain't drafting take him there. At 10. See, that's why I get a little nervous. That's why I get a little nervous. But, but my team ain't drafting there. That dude that dude got top 10 tape in it, top five, really, top five tape in this draft. And I, I'm just I'm just, I'm just, just tape guy, man. That's just me. I'm just, I'm just tape guy. No, that's fair. And 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 you're right. On tape, there's a lot of him blowing up plays. Like like I don't remember who it was against, but there's that screen he blew up for like through like three blockers. So it's Florida. <laughs> it's weird. It's tough. You just seen occasionally him when he does get hands on him, he gets kind of pushed back. You can tell he's a little lighter. But it's like I guess. And I was mostly just calling because I was just wondering to kind of try to get talked off the ledge about being worried about it. But like to me, it kind of reminds me of Metcalf in a way of like there's certain things he may not do super well like Metcalf couldn't turn but you need to focus kind of on what players do well as opposed to what they can't do okay watch this this is me talking you off the ledge so you don't have to worry about it you ready yup don't worry about it (laughs) (laughs) Uncle Charlie you in the chat right now so I know you can hear me Uncle Charlie this is a request on for Tuesday Right for when we have our little meeting, I'm gonna have a phone line set up over on the the what's the name on. I need you to tell the story about the model, Timberlands, and Terrace. Uncle Charlie, I need you to confirm in the chat box that you can tell that story on my show on the phones for me. Unc, model, Timberland, Terrace. I see you in the chat. I know you hear me right now. Uncle Charlie, can you confirm that for me? Go ahead, Kyle. <laughs> that's all I- <laughs> but yeah, no, that's pretty much all I got. Hopefully, we can uh, get Green or Dean at twenty four and improve this team. Hey, I agree, man. Let's go get in the Kobe Dean, put it with Michael Parsons, and win a goddamn Super Bowl. Appreciate you, Kyle. Man, that'd be fun. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uncle Charlie, I know you're in the chat box right now. I see you in the, you know, what I'm saying, being cool, shaking hands with all the with all the fellas, you're hugging and kissing on the cheeks of all the ladies, man. But Uncle Charlie, I need you to confirm. I need you to confirm with Vach that, you know, Tuesday when we do our little our little mission, I need you to tell the story about models, Timberlands, and terrorists. I need you to do it. I need you to do it. Tony T is up next. Uh, 949 is on deck. Then we're going to wrap it up. Hey, look, Uncle Charlie's so cool. He ain't even listening right now. He's just in the chat box. Cool. He's just in the chat box shaking hands with everybody. He ain't, look, chat box, will y'all tell Uncle Charlie that we need models, Timberlands, and Terrace Tuesday? He don't even hear me. Look, Uncle Charlie got the dog on show fast forwarded. I mean, pardon me, rewind it from from like he he's only listening to his call. That's all he want to do. Uncle Charlie is a star. He goes to my stream and rewinds and listens to himself talk. Chatbots, can y'all please tell Uncle Charlie that Vach needs him on Tuesday to tell the story about models, Timberlands, and terrorists, if you don't mind. I just need confirmation from him. He going to mute my stream just to be in the chat box chilling with y'all. Y'all killing me. <laughs> Tony T, what up? Hey, my man, Vach. I haven't talked to you since last year, day three fucking drafts. Excuse my French. Am I allowed to say that word on there? You can say what the fuck you want, man. This is home. You can come oh. back whenever you want. You know what I mean? Whenever oh, you want to come God, home. God. Hey, hey, man, this is home. Well, let me just tell you, Parsons was a good pick. I was uh, I was, I was, was glad about it. Yeah, for sure. Now, let me ask you a quick question. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah. the old man's passing away. 
You know, I'm an old timer, I guess. I, I'm only 38, but I feel like I think like I'm 140. You for know, it just, that's sure. just the freaking way it goes, you know? For sure. Like, Jerry Jones, before he goes, the old man deserves a Super Bowl, you know? Uh, the Dalai Lama, the old man, he deserves to go home to his country. You know, yeah. none of my business. Anyway, none of you know that. What I'm getting at is, I keep seeing, I want the Kobe Dean and Al Green. I'll just spit it out. I want them both. I don't care if you got to trade next year's wine. I don't care what you got to do to do it. With those two players, and I think Josh Ball is actually going to be in. I think, he, I, think, I, think, I think we both know what happened there. Let's disappear this kid for a little while out of sight, out of mind. But the sure. kid can play some ball. What did they draft him in the fourth? If he, did, if he didn't have the history that he did, he would have been drafted in probably the late second. So, anyways, what I'm getting at is, is what would it take to trade, like, in, in uh, like if Dean falls to us, mm -hmm. what would it take to trade back and get green? And, I, and that's it, my man. I can't, call, I can't follow you as much. Life's got me on a twisted path. I'm trying to think about, you know, when not, uh, when ga if gas hits $9 a tank, how are we going to put food in the cabinets, you know what I mean? And they got these, they got these man-made media streams, you know, Devising the people, not uniting them, and that's why I love your show is because you're always about it. And even though it's cowboy related and football related, you always find a way to bring you into it and bring and bring real life into it. So your dedication and your hard work, I'm watching you on the screen, my man. Is work. I might start some shit in a little different way, not on football, because listen, people need to be taught up on the economy. We can't print money like we did back then. There's another international monetary fund controlled by China. So if we start getting into printing wars, guess what? The, the value of the dollar deflates. Right. If the value of the dollar deflates, anyways, I don't want to get into it. Right, yeah. Well, Not yeah, football yeah, related. Right, right, right. For sure, for sure. Hey, man, Tony. Yeah. Look, Tony, no matter what happens, Tony, you keep your head up. You understand? You keep your head up. And you just keep on grinding, man. Day by day, we're going to find a way to get better. You feel me? Just don't even worry about it, man. Yes, keep, sir. keep your head up. We're going to be sure. Yes, you feel me? You feel me? And I'm gonna do my hey, best. Tell me what it would take. What would it take draft wise, pick wise? Uh to get to get Dean and, and Green? If Dean drops uh -huh. and we get Dean, that's like the if, in my opinion. Right. Because I don't see how you let a player like that drop. I don't know. I'm not a film analyst. I just look at a guy and I say, That guy can play football. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. For sure. And that guy can play football. So if he drops to us and say Green's there, I know. I don't want to wait, wait to, like, like Kansas City's got two picks there. What are they, got 29 and 30? Yeah, they right. like, although they like drafting late. They, they hold them little babies. Yeah. But, you know, maybe should, who's ever that 27, we then trade back in. What would it be? What would it take? You would probably have to do like a two, three, and a five to get back into the first from the, from, from, from 60 something to get back right. at 24. Man, it might, it might take like a. Like what a, about, ne what if you include next year's one? And God, let me tell you why it makes God sense. Damn it, because I'm, next year's one, are you going to get green next year? Next year's one might be Michael Parsons, Tony. What you mean? <laughs> no, it's not. You want your Cowboys to win the Super Bowl? It better not be. It better not be Michael Parsons. But like, what if Michael Parsons? What if Mike? What, but what if Dak Prescott get caught selling drugs at the border? We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, well, we both know that they that, that water over there in Mississippi is good freaking water, no, and we know. Anyways, I don't want to get into the personals, <laughs> but. I, I got his. I got something for the NFL and Dak. If, if Dak were ever listening to me, Dak, listen, I'm a suicide survivor. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, I would start an international music awareness event on Suicide Awareness Day, uh, September 20th or whatever it uh -huh. is, and just let DJs internationally have live streams just to bring awareness to like mental illness. I know, I know Jeff deals with that stuff too, but sure. it's more than that. It's about bringing the right energy with the right group of people and thinking that more for genetically we can create something mm -hmm. you know what i mean but anyways i love you watch thank you for letting me rant love it love it appreciate you man tony t ladies and gentlemen appreciate it appreciate it appreciate it appreciate it appreciate it appreciate it man keep your head up you feel me you feel me big watch cares if don't nobody else care you feel me he has marinara sauce run through his veins he's definitely in the east coast somewhere I don't know what borough or what part of uh or what part of Boston he from. <laughs> but he he definitely from that side of the country. And and another reason I knew, he said gas is nine dollars. <laughs>
I ain't even know people had cars. Uh, people drove 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 cars around in in in, in damn uh, New York or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know that they drove, but nine dollars. We got confirmation from Uncle Charlie. Cut my goddamn music up, dog. We got confirmation. Ooh. Shit. Let's go to the middle so I can do my young job. We got confirmation. We got confirmation. It's gonna be a fun day. Not only do I need all, all I need Uncle Charlie to show up, but I need everybody to show up on Tuesday. I need you here. I need you here. I need you here. I need you here. A key. I need you here. All right, cool. <laughs> Time confirmed. We. I kind of just want to tell y'all what the fuck we doing. I kind of just want to tell y'all the fuck we're doing. I kind of just want to tell y'all what we're doing. After this last call, I'm tell y'all what we're doing. 949, what up? Who this? This is Gouch. What, what up, Vach? What up, my guy? What you got for the show? So, I, I know you're a big Garrett Wilson guy. Mm-hmm. And I just had, I've had, like, some serious concerns, like, after watching his film. Sure. That people aren't really talking about. Mm-hmm. His his balance is like a huge issue. Like I would say, like when he when he runs his routes, his cuts are like super exaggerated, mm -hmm. and he's kind of like, he's like kind of like flailing all over the place. Sure, it works at the college level, but like when he's when he's facing like a longer corner, okay, and he has to like be press be press coverage. He like he really struggles, but when you when he's facing like an off man or. Um, when he when he's facing like off man or just anyone yeah. playing soft coverage, he For sure. he's really good. Yeah, and um, it kind of gives me like yeah. Jerry Judy vibes. Right. I'd say. Um, you know the 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 best way, and I, I don't I don't think he flails around a lot. I think I think that's I think that's that's kind of great. But um, the 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 best way to beat press coverage is to just put him you know put him at split. You know, I think he had to play a lot of flanker, um, because Olave was playing a whole bunch of split. You know what I mean? But if you just uh, take him off the line of scrimmage, um, you know, he'll be fine. He, he's he's good to go. No, yeah, but, like, when he, he's just, like, his physicality is, like, when someone gets hands on him, like, in his yeah, routes. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't have to be pressed. Right, right. But just, like, when the, when he has to deal with, like, someone close to him. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, you know, he's a, you know, he's a, he's a route runner, so, you know, you know, but, you know, people don't always get close to him, so, uh, you know, I'd imagine when people get close, you know, maybe, but um, another thing that you can do is, um, you know, you can put him at slot, you know, you can put him at slot, that'll be a good way to do that, and, um, you know, he can get the NFL peanut butter, and he can get a little bigger, you know. That That's true. Yeah, right. right. I just, for like, sure. Who's your um just, who, who's your um number one receiver in this draft? I'd say uh Drake London. Yeah, Drake London's like, fun. Drake London's fun. He's a fun player. Yeah. Do you like uh what do you think about Jameson Williams? Uh Jameson he's pretty good. He like everyone knows what's good at like he's he's gonna be a deep threat. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, he can, you know, he can, he can run some routes too. He can do some, he can do some things down under for sure. So, 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 where do you have Garrett Wilson ranked? I don't, I don't think you, you have him ranked very high based off the, you know, what you said. I mean, what do, you, what do you have Drake? Uh, what do you have uh, Garrett Wilson ranked? I'd say he's probably around like number five. Number or five. Like six. So if you, so if, so if, if you don't mind, can let, you wait, let me go ahead, go ahead, explain. I'll explain why. Because if it, if it ends up working. It, he could be he could be a star, but the difference is like I think if it if it if his physicality doesn't become an issue at the next level, then he could be a star. But it it also I feel like he kind of reminds of Jerry Judy. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But Jerry Judah was one of the better receivers in his class. Like so. So why is Jerry Judah like a top three receiver in his class, and like Garrett Wilson, like 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 you know, just just run me down your your uh, top five, one to five. Go. What you got? Drake London. Um, I would go. Jamison Williams, Jalen Burks, Chris Olave, um, Garrett Wilson, Khalil Shakir, probably number six. You got you got Khalil Shakir at six. I I know that sounds kind of wild, but trust me. Tell like, tell just tell me why you got Khalil Shakir at six. Just tell me why. Well, I just I like a really good slot guy, yeah, me too. and me too. I think he's I think he's a really good route runner. I, when he knows he's not getting the ball, he'll kind of like kind of be lazy at the top of his route sometimes. But like when he has to be man coverage, you can see like that. Next level, for sure. And I, 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 he's just really smooth, like really good after the catch. He can make those. He can make. He has really good ball skills too. He kind of has concentration drops problems, I'd say, but that's not. So where do you the have? Thing that's, the, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. The go thing ahead. that the reason why I, I think Garrett Wilson could succeed is the difference between like him and Jerry Judy. Is I think he has significantly better ball skills, like. Right. But I think they both have similar like balance issues. Like you'll see Jerry Judy like fall down during like half of his routes. Yeah, right. So 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 listen, so how so where do you rank Traylon Burks in comparison to Khalil Shakir? Because they both play similarly, correct? No. They don't play similarly. Well, I mean, they don't play similarly they, at all. They both played in the slot, but Traylon Burks the reason Traylon Burks was like kind of a gadget guy is more because of like his quarterback and like they're just trying to get the, him the ball. Right. I think he can tell on the outside. Khalil Shakir is a slot guy, I'd say. So, so you're not like accounting for like yak ability and like, you know, yards after catch or anything like that. Well, they're both really good after the catch. They're just, they're completely different. Completely after, different. Like, after the catch, like oh. after the catch, I'd say Khalil Shakir's not like breaking tackles like the way that Traylon Burks is. Oh, well, that's that's interesting. Okay. I yeah, I I just think that there's different ways to win after the catch. For that's sure. Lost. For sure. Yeah, they're yeah they're they're a little okay. So 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 what do you think about Olave after the catch? Like he's another different guy after the catch, but he is a yak guy, right? Like he's also a yak guy, correct? Nah, I, I don't. What Olave fuck? doesn't offer much after the catch. Like what? That. What? That's crazy. Like he's he's deep. Like he'll he'll get you the yards he needs, but he's not. I don't think he's like super elusive. Like after the catch. Yeah. But he's, he's like. He's, like, he's but he, solid. But he's super fast. Like Will Fuller. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. That's right. Kind of reminds me like Will Fuller. Like Will Fuller is not like a great yak guy, but he's still fast. Like deep Yeah, I feel you. One hundred percent. Yeah, I feel you. But <clears throat> the the thing the reason I have Drake London number one is because like. The person I compare him to, he, he reminds me a lot of Michael Thomas, like the role that Michael Thomas is going to play. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I got you. That makes sense. Because yeah. he, he inside out, super physical. I think he's the best route runner, which a lot of people aren't going to agree with. But he's, he's the, like the best I've seen from like a big man at the line of scrimmage. Right. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, that's all you got for the show? No, yeah, that's it. All right, appreciate you. Uh, I didn't even get your name, but I'm going to go ahead and get you up out of here, man. Man, shut up! What? Well, well, not shut up, but like, like, talk loud! Hell wrong with you? How did I have so much shit just laying around my desk? I need to clean my desk up. Hey, man. <laughs> Fun show. You know? Content king, man. What's your, what's your, hey, look, if you enjoyed the show, man, can we get flames, please? In the chat, please. What a show we had today. What a what a show we had today. You know what I mean? Just just a lot of fun things that happen. A lot of dope interactions, man. Look, Alex don't like the phones. But bro, how 
how do you not like the phones <laughs> and what we do with it you know what i mean like how do you how do you not how do you not how do you not how do you how do you how do you not <laughs> um we got some super 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 We got some supers. Let me read these supers off before we dip up out of here. Like I said, don't forget, like, I'm going to go, like, get something to eat or whatever. Like, just to have a quick bite to eat or whatever because it's been a while. But after the stream, we're going to meet over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Vach Lombardi. If y'all got anything you want me to react to, just kind of send send it and I'll react to it if you want. Um, but mostly we're going to be playing Elden Ring on twitch.tv slash Vach Lombardi. You feel what I'm saying? I hope y'all enjoyed the show, man. I really hope y'all, you know what I mean? Like... I know we're a we're a sports based show and we really do a lot of football talk. We you know, but I don't want to you know I don't want it to just be just a regular sports show. You know what I mean? I kind of want to I kind of want to put a little bop in it. You know, I want to uh, put a little bop in it. Tyler Cunningham dropped a deuce in super chat says, "Who would you take in the second NPF?" Nicholas Polite, uh, Nicholas Petit Friere, okay, or Max Mitchell. I like Max Mitchell a bunch. Max Mitchell from University of Louisiana, I believe. Um, but I like Nicholas Petit Friere from Ohio State. I like him a little better. Um, and I see all I see all the people join uh, joining the Twitch. I appreciate y'all, man. Um, and then we got a uh, Brazilian X Skills. I think that's Ed from Atlanta. He dropped a dime in the super chat. He says, "Rack the gun." I wanted to, but I didn't have the weapon on me. All right. Um, Hey, we gave we gave you a a good two hours today. We gave you a good two hours. Let's see if anybody else is live so we can uh show some love and give them a little raid. Let's see what we got here. Let's see who else is live. See who live. See who live. See who live. Nobody wants to be live when I'm live. That's crazy. Like y'all just simply don't be live when I'm live. I have a very interesting thing going on. Chat box, y'all wanna um, y'all wanna have some fun? It's a non-football show, but I know the ladies that's doing the podcast, they're just starting their little podcast thing. And it'll really be dope if y'all just go over there, show a little love, and be like Vach Lombardi sent me. It'll be dope. Y'all ain't gotta stay for the content. But I just support the people that supported me. These are people that support me and they do it. They, 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 they just doing their own podcast right now. I think it'll be dope if we just go over there and support them. You know what I mean? If we just send some people over there, just, Hey, show them some love. Y'all leave if you want. I just think that'll be cool. This is what we're going to do. This is what we, what we, what we, what, what we, I'm dropping a link in the chat. If y'all want to stay and listen, do your thing. But the objective here. Is to just raid this raid this chat box. I think all three of them have watched my show at some point. And I just want to show love to anybody that's watched my show. And their show is on right now. So we just want to show them a little bit of love because they showed me a whole bunch of love. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski and the Piska Whiskey. Don't forget we're gonna be doing um don't forget we're gonna be doing uh Elden Ring on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Vash Lombardi. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski and Piska Whiskey, man. Until next time, peace.